It's a Northwest Lifestyle Weekend on Como News. This is IRG's Health Talk. Back to Tom Hutler and Shannon O'Kelly. All right, our first guest is uh, Dr. Stuart Kerr, orthopedic surgeon at ProLiance Surgeons. And Shannon, this happened, uh, of course, a few months ago. Tiger Woods had this horrific crash. And a lot of people are wondering, not only would he be okay, but would he play golf again? And that's, I think, something that's probably still too early to tell. But uh, you, you go through something like that when you're an athlete and you have all that athletic ability, all of a sudden the brakes are put on. You have to learn to do things like just simply walk again. Yeah, it's a significant injury. It's a fracture, a significant fracture. And in good hands, such as Dr. Kerr, these athletes and people can get back after these fractures. It's pretty amazing when they start putting these things back together. All right, Shannon O'Kelly and Dr. Stuart Kerr. Dr. Kerr, welcome. Welcome to Health Talk. Uh, we're glad you're joining us. We're going to talk today about basically comminuted fractures of the tibia fibula. This is uh, a fracture that Tiger Woods sustained in the uh, accident that he was involved in recently. But before we get into that, man, I was looking at your bio. Wow. Um, talk about experience, probably in trauma and trauma surgery and trauma fractures. I mean, military service, naval, Navy SEALs, uh, trauma center in Anchorage. I mean, tell us about your history and uh, your practice. Well, I've always enjoyed taking care of a lot of injuries. I've spent a fair deal of time overseas taking care of a lot of our injured service service men and service women, and I've seen some really horrific injuries, both. Uh, overseas on deployments, and then you know back home at the uh, various naval medical centers, reconstructing a lot of those injuries and getting people back to a high level of function. Uh, and then also I've done that in uh, a few busy trauma centers throughout the United States as well. So you probably have seen these these um, serious fractures of the tib fib. Let's talk about the tib fib. Let's talk about the anatomy. Let's talk about what it means. The term comminuted fracture. And uh, let's set that up from kind of an, an anatomical standpoint and then kind of the trauma and the mechanism of injury. So the uh, the tibia and the fibula, those are the bones that connect the from the knee to the ankle. And essentially the, the tibia is the larger of those two bones. The fibula is the one that's on the outside. The tibia is what you typically uh, can feel uh, right underneath the surface of your skin. And that's the, the bone that you uh, protect typically with like a shin pad when you're playing soccer and other sports. Mm -hmm. A comminuted fracture basically means that the fracture has uh, many segments to it rather than just a clean break of that uh, of those two bones in half. A comminuted fracture is one that's uh, more shattered and has many pieces and as such, has a lot more energy that's been directed into it to cause that fracture. Yeah, so let's talk about that energy or that mechanism of injury. This sounds like a comminuted fracture of the tib-fib is an impact injury. In, in, in uh, example, a car wreck, uh, I would imagine that you're kind of pushing on the brake or something like that or bracing yourself and that car impact, that energy goes up through that tib-fib and just explodes it basically in these multiple pieces. Is that fair to say from a mechanism of injury? It is. There's a lot of mechanisms that can cause comminuted fractures, crush injuries, other things like this. But in uh, the case with Tiger Woods, his injury most likely was uh, a, a loading and uh, a loading type of injury, high energy injury from his, you know, higher speed automobile crash. And that energy dissipated through those bones and, and fractured them in numerous pieces. Well, you know, I, I can imagine, um, you know, the fibula is a fairly small bone, but the tibia is a fairly good sized bone and it's pretty sturdy bone. Um, I can imagine that's a pretty significant impact to cause that bone to kind of just implode basically or fracture in several pieces. Um, it's a, it's a high impact injury usually or some kind of trauma, obviously. Correct. Okay. okay so what, what, what are the concerns then? You've got these fragmented pieces of bone. Uh, you know, I know from an anatomical standpoint, the tib fib, that interosseous membrane or that, 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 that structure, that anatomical connection, soft tissue, you've got nerves, you've got blood vessels. Those nerves and blood vessels are going down through that area to get to the toes, for example. I mean, I can imagine there's a lot of concern here. Well, there is. And typically in these, uh, in these types of injuries with with that amount of energy that goes through that limb and, and and fractures the bone like in his case it was an open fracture um and also uh you know with the, with these types of injuries there's typically a lot of soft tissue injury that goes along with the <clears throat> with the fracture itself and those can be quite concerning and 
uh, as such. That's one of the reasons that he had a <clears throat> what we call a compartment release to relieve mm-hmm. some of the pressure on the underlying muscles and neurovascular structures. Back with Dr. Stuart Kerr and Shannon O'Kelly after this time out on Como. It's a Northwest Lifestyle Weekend on Como News. IRG's Health Talk continues. We continue our conversation with Dr. Stuart Kerr, orthopedic surgeon at ProLiance Surgeons, and Shannon O'Kelly. Dr. Kerr, again, thank you for joining us here on Health Talk. And by the way, I should uh, say thank you so much for your service and taking care of our soldiers. Um, But, you know, with Tiger Woods, this is a significant fracture. You described it from a mechanism of injury. It's high impact. Uh, You're a surgeon. How do you start? I mean, I mean, what, what are you looking at? Just this puzzle and you're going, whoa, what do I do here? Well, you know, aside from the procedure, the, the first thing that I'm always doing and any good uh, orthopedic surgeon or traumatologist is doing is, you know, really making sure that there's no other injuries. Ensure that you're taking care of all potential life-threatening things, obviously, first. Then the focus can, you know, really get into, uh, into remedying that. For me, a, a big consideration, especially for an open fracture or really... Uh, severely displaced fracture is uh, trying to get these pieces back into proper rotation, length of the limb, alignment of the limb, so that when the bones heal and the soft tissues heal, that you're going to have a functional limb that doesn't have some type of a, of a deformity that would potentially add to the morbidity of the of the injury itself down the line yeah so i mean i mean i, I just can't imagine i mean i'm just kind of what I, when i'm visualizing here is almost like a puzzle i mean how do you you know are you using rods or plates wires i mean uh all these pieces of fractures putting them back together finding their placement like you said rotation torsion length uh, you're not just looking at what you're doing right there in time but you're looking at what that limb's going to do you know 15 years from now so, I mean, is, is it just uh, putting it all back together and kind of, you know, tell us about that. All of the pieces uh, for like a tibia fracture, for example, do not need to go directly back in like a jigsaw puzzle would, for example. The body has a- an amazing uh, opportunity to re-knit these bones together in the right environment. But it is critical that the, that the length of that, of that bone is brought back out to a proper length that you uh, make sure that the the rotation of that limb is uh, properly restored and and the alignment, the overall axis of that limb for weight-bearing purposes. And if you stick to those principles, are kind of the soft tissues and uh, get those in an environment uh, with respect to debris and uh, any... Uh, uh, contamination that's underneath the underlying muscles or into the bone, uh, these do t- tend to heal quite well. When you say healing quite well, I mean, what is the outcome? I mean, um, just for maybe a normal patient, but also Tiger Woods, a high-level functioning athlete like he is, is, is that looking pretty good uh, in the right hands of a trauma surgeon or orthopedic surgeon like yourself? I think for good function, it is. Uh, one of the things that we're always concerned with when someone has an open fracture is a uh, a delayed healing or a, a possible infection of the bone down the road. So that has to be monitored quite closely. Wow. Okay. Great stuff. I mean, the information uh, is, is, is fantastic. I just have really appreciative for what you do. Dr. Kerr, thank you again for your time and joining us in Health Talk. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Pretty amazing. What can be done, as you mentioned, Shannon, putting people back together is, I think, how you phrased it when we started that segment. And that's kind of what's had to be the case here with uh, Tiger Woods. Yeah, we look at these fractures. I mean, there's fragmented bones. I mean, there's nerves, there's tissue, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it can be complicated. But again, the possibility of return to activity is pretty significant in the right hands. And, you know, when you're playing something at a world-class level like that, certainly getting back to that level after an injury like this or like the horrific leg injury that uh, Alex Smith, a quarterback in the NFL, suffered and oh, then gosh. came back to play. Uh, amazing stories. And it's just amazing what can be done medically these days for those athletes.